بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Ittaqid da'watu mithloom The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi said Fear the supplication of the oppressed one Fa'inna baynaha wa baynuhu Laysa fi hijab Or kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Because between the supplication of the person who is oppressed there is no hijab between his dua reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing covering or restraining that supplication from reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that they were oppressed. And the ulama, they even describe, even this is the case with the non-Muslim. So it shows us the importance of not oppressing people. The reason I wanted to bring this up, first and foremost, to remind myself and correct myself if in any way and I'm sure without a doubt I've oppressed people. And all of us fall into sin as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam, they make mistakes or they commit sin. And the best of those who commit sin is those who repent. And so when we look at the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and we look at our lives and we see the gap. We see how far we are really from the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and really from the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een beginning with the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. And due to this fact, we fall into oppression. And one of the examples I can think of that we commonly fall into is by backbiting and slandering people. Sometimes we slander and backbite the people we work with, especially our bosses, especially those in char who are charged in authority over us. Some people, they spend time backbiting the leaders and slandering the leaders. And we know the ahadith, the mini hadith of the Prophet wasallam, talking about the sacredness of the Muslim rulers, even if they are oppressive. That at the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah is that we supplicate for the oppressive leader. And under the banner of Jarwa Ta'deel, unfortunately, many of us, we oppress our brothers and sisters in Islam. That sometimes we speak about people either without knowledge, that we have little knowledge, and we don't know the quiet and the principles of Jarwa Ta'deel, or criticizing a person who has mistakes, or a person who's a wicked sinner, or the person who's fallen into bid'ah, that we don't know these principles, but yet we speak about them readily. Or the other case scenarios, maybe we have some background in these matters, but the way we're practicing it is we're speaking about individuals who we do not have a right to speak about. Or we go beyond the bounds and we speak about them in manners that attack their honor and attack their sacredness in Islam and so forth. So then we begin to fall under the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, where he said, Fear the supplication of the person who is oppressed. We begin to oppress our brothers and sisters. And I can think of some readily, some very, uh, very well-known examples without mentioning specific individuals of particular du'at, people who call to Allah, who call to the tawheed of Allah, who call to kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they were oppressed by their brothers and sisters, either for mistakes they made, or either out of jealousy, or either for things that were taken out of context, or what have you. There's very various reasons that this can happen. But the important thing is to watch backbiting and uh, um, slandering people, and oppression and falling into oppressiveness. We do not want to fall into oppressiveness. And I've seen, even with my own eyes, even myself, that we are afflicted a lot, sometimes with sicknesses, sometimes with uh, various illnesses, sometimes with family strife, sometimes with uh, people not accepting our dawah, sometimes with humiliation. Why? Because we oppressed someone else and we didn't realize it. And that's why I'm mentioning this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu it took a dawah to a mithloom. Fear the dawah of the person who's oppressed. Because we don't know why is so-and-so finding uh, illness and trial in their life. And they call to Allah. They're calling to goodness. 
but they forgot that they trampled the honor of this one, they slandered this person, they cursed this person, they humiliated this person without the right to do so. That's what we're talking about. That's what we have to be careful of. That's what we have to be cautious and warn ourselves against. Because the Prophet Wasallam said when he was going by the graves of uh, two Jews that were being tormented in the grave, and he said one of them was being oppressed for slandering people or for spreading tales about uh, a person throughout the community with the intention to do evil. That's what uh, Ghiba and the Prophet Sallallahu said فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَ This is Namima. He said, and this person used to carry the tales around the community with the intention to spread evil. So that shows us, anytime, think about it, anytime you want to speak about an individual, even if it's a person from Ahl Bid'ah, who has the right to be spoken against and spoken about and warned against, but make sure you're doing it with the HUD, within the HUD of the Sharia, that you're doing it within the bounds of the Sharia, that you're not going beyond the bounds. For example, if we're talking about this Sufi who calls the grave worship, who calls to this, are we going beyond the bounds and speaking about them? Or are we we're talking about what needs to be talked about, what needs to be warned out, warned against from their behavior, from their aqidah, from their methodology, from their bid'ah? in their supplication and in their grave worship and whatever else they're doing. Are we warning against them? And are we warning against their principles and their usul? Or are we trying to big ourselves up? So again, Nakhla Mukhalif, speaking about someone who has differed in the religion, has went against the religious principles, has fallen into in religious innovation, takes ikhlas. It takes ikhlas in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu as with all of our deeds. Remember, it's an act of worship. When you speak about others, it's an act of worship. You should only speak about others for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to defend the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to defend the Muslims, to help the Muslims, to assist the Muslims, to protect the Muslims, but not to big up yourselves. That's a key thing. Not to humiliate that individual because you don't like his race, or you don't like his, his or her tribe, or you don't like his or her uh, nationality, or you don't like the fact that they're famous in the Dawah. You don't like the fact that they're doing good here, and they're doing good, or people are praising them. No, that's not a reason to speak against them. It's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we have to fear the Dawah, fear the supplication of the Mithloom, of the person who's oppressed. Stay away from that. And the Prophet Sallallahu will end with this. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in another hadith about the person who will be muflis on the Day of Judgment. This person will be bankrupt on the Day of Judgment. And they were asked, uh, the, the Prophet Sallallahu was asked, well, was it because, you know, basically this person, did they not have wealth? You know, what was it? No, because this person will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment with all of these beautiful deeds. Maybe they gave charity. Maybe they were a big dai. Maybe they were an alim. You know, they had knowledge, ilm wa fiqh, fiddeen, and they called the people to tawheed and, and ikhlas with the bad al-sunnah. And they practiced the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. And they called the people to khair. And many people became Muslim because of them. And they gave charity and they built masajid and they they built Marakis of Sunnah and they did all this good. But as the Prophet said, that they took the wealth of this one and they cursed this one. They oppressed the people. So then all of those good deeds were being snatched up. Snatching up these deeds. Snatching up those deeds. Taking away this khair. Taking away that khair. We don't want to do that. We want to stay away from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins for the many ways we've oppressed ourselves and oppressed others. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from doing it in the future. And may Allah wa ta'ala bless all of our brothers and sisters of Ahlul Sunnah to be one hand, striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call into Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu and may Allah rectify the affairs of this ummah and rectify the affairs of the ulama that they can come together, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, and, and work together and call into Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.